Hello, welcome to Bob Point goes to Stockport. So, this is uh, my little journey. Sorry if it's a bit bouncy. Um, journey up to Element Game Stockport 4. Turn right. Excuse me. That's how I listen to the little lady in the car. For um, the Dead Zone tournament. I'm st Mariana Station Epsilon. There you go. I was struggling to remember it. Not been able to remember it ever since I entered Mariana Station. Sounds a bit like Meatball Mariana. Um, so I'm on my way. Um, I'm going to try and drive safely and legally while still talking to you. Although I can see that the camera is bouncing around. This may be unusable, I don't know. Anyway, it's a beautiful Sunday morning. It is 20 to 8. And the journey should take probably about an hour and seven minutes. But uh, I'll just do a quick video here talking about uh, what I hope the day will bring. So yeah, um, I played one game of Dead Zone 2.0. Um, I did play a couple of games <coughs> of Dead Zone 1.0 um, not long after it first released. I wasn't in on that original Kickstarter which did Megabucks Romantic. Um, but for whatever reason I couldn't um, I couldn't engage uh, any people at the club with the game and uh, it was a bit too much effort to, for me to provide both sides and all the scenery around all the time. I enjoyed the game um, but for an occasional pickup game it was probably a little bit too involved rules wise. Uh, the, all the news about 2.0 was that uh, it was a lot more s streamlined and simplified. Um, checking out the various YouTube channels and forums and online, so usual online sources, um, it seemed like things had improved somewhat. And also, there's certainly one person at my club interested in playing it with me, plus uh, a couple of other people locally, notably Andy from uh, Throat Saw and Uncertain Craig uh, who were playing it After also so uh, yards, it didn't seem right, there'll be then, then a problem in uh, finding uh, an opponent. So uh, yeah I, uh, I jumped in and uh, got myself a red faction. Um, I now have a Marauder faction, which I've painted up in the last couple of days. Um, I've got the 2.0 starter box, so I also have Enforcers and Forge Fathers, and I've also got a copy of the first edition box set, mainly for the scenery, but also obviously uh, Enforcers and Plague in there. So I've got plenty to choose from at the moment. So it's reps that I'm taking today. Um, it's 200 point list. Um, the event pack did say two 200 point lists and you've got to use each one at least once during the day over the four games. But I'm a bit limited on my models at the moment having just started and have the clarification that uh, it's okay. Sorry about that, I think I lost you for a second. So, uh, I'm fairly sure this is going to be unusable because it is bouncing around all over the place. But, so, uh, double Terratons. Uh, Andy used his Terraton to great effect. 
by uh, teleporting him into combat now. I, I, I think I've completely forgotten about the teleport, but uh, I shall be trying to use that to get them into combat as early as possible. And try and make use of that flamer and frag grenade launcher uh, weapons that they've got, which are one use, but uh, I'm going to give them a go. Um, then there's the Rebel Grogan uh, with his onslaught cannon with the suppressive fire. That sounds an impressive option, which I shall be uh, trying out. Um, is that it? I've forgotten anything. I must have forgotten something. Um, no, maybe. Anyway, um, there might be one more model in there, but as I'm new to the game, I can't actually remember. But anyway, I'm looking forward to it. I did watch a bit of um, Andy Ranson's video, Andy 2D6, uh, right. last night. Um, if I'd known it was a thing, I would have certainly posted up a picture of my forces. Uh, I did see um, pictures of lots of plague at least one in four, so, so I think there's 12 players there today and according to Andy there's six, at least six play players. Um, I'm fairly certain there's at least one more rep, so plus me is eight. Uh, at least one in four a faction that I've seen, uh, that makes nine, so uh, I think if Andrew Sharp, if, uh, if you're a player, I think you've alluded to Asterians. 10. Ross Diggle, not quite sure what he's taking. I'm playing uh, Chris Evans um, in the first game. The draw was made last night and posted up uh, on Facebook. Uh, so, looking forward to that. Not sure what Chris is taking. I suppose the odds are he's play Force on two chance. Um, I have no idea what they do, to be honest, but um, I'm looking forward to it. Really excited play four more games of Dead Zone. Um, I met Aid uh, locally who's uh, one of my most regular opponents at the Stoke Club. And, uh, we play AOS together, Lord of the Rings, well just about anything to be honest. A lot of the Peter Pig games that I play as well, the historical games. Um, Aid's got some Veermen, uh, which are now built, not sure if they're painted yet, but uh, he's also got some Asterians actually, uh, he turned 50 uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I think that may have been one of his birthday presents. Um, After and I'm building uh, a load of scenery as well, so uh, hopefully we'll be getting some Dead Zone action on uh, together fairly soon. Um, so just a little bit about my YouTube channel um, in that at the moment it's certainly looking as though it's going to be very romantic centric um, there will be other bits of content on there um, as the mood takes but with the wide variety of games that I'm looking to play from Mantic uh, not just Dead Zone um, I'm not going to be short of content so I'm already booked in for excuse me whilst I just negotiate this roundabout Um, yes, I'm booked in for the um, the Walking Dead All Out War conflict event uh, in Manchester. That's on the 25th of August, uh, which I'm really looking forward to. Just looking to source my own survivor for that. Um, studio miniatures or hassle-free or heresy or even maybe maybe um, the plastic warlord. 
Mail Survivors kit might be the source for that. Um, I'll shop around and uh, I'll find something suitable. I was originally thinking of um, using the not Daryl figure. I forget what it's called, but the studio miniatures do uh, a range of survivors that um, are very similar to the Walking Dead TV series characters. So there's certainly a Herschel in there uh, with a peg leg. I think there is a version of Carl and Rick as well, um, and the, the does, uh, there is a Daryl with his crossbow. Um, I'm just not quite sure on the scale because the Walking Dead figures are chunky. Let's uh, let's say that about them. Uh, they are beautiful. Um, I've painted up all of the core set now, um, which is six survivors and. 12 walkers um, and albeit uh, I'm enjoying reading the comic uh, I'm, I've come to Walking Dead through the TV series so uh, I would it'd be great to uh, for me uh, to represent uh, some of the characters from the TV series that aren't in the comic and therefore produced by Mantic so um Daryl figure uh, really appeals to me, uh, if I can uh, source that, and if the, the studio one, some event on it, I don't know what that is, lots of tents and caravans, um, if the studio miniatures one is uh, suitably in scale, then I shall use that, I'll, I will buy him anyway, I, I think it's three or four pounds, so it's, it's not a major outlay. So I'm in that event. Um, there is the uh, Dreadball UK Championships this coming Saturday, which I have negotiated a pass for. Um, Timing-wise, it might be a bit difficult. Um, I, might, I might have to duck out of the last game. I'll, I'll contact the organisers uh, and see whether or not that would completely screw up the arrangements. Well, what I wouldn't want to do is go say I've got to leave at three o'clock so I can't play the last game uh, and then leave somebody without a game. Normally in those circumstances I know uh, an event organiser will normally jump in and, and play a game when there's odd numbers. Well, I don't want to screw things around. Uh, I am due at a, a party in the park actually um, which starts at four but I've give, been given dispensation from Mrs. Bob Point to arrive at five, um, which would leave me about an hour and a half. I'm about, I'll be about an hour and a half away, so I'd probably have to leave about 3.30 from the event. So I don't know if the event's winding down at that point or what, what the timings are for that last game. So. I'll, I'll make contact with the organiser, I would love to go. I've not played 2.0 Dreadball yet. Uh, I've played quite a lot of uh, Dreadball, the original Dreadball. Um, and would either take the Hysterians or my Orcs, Order Team, the Thrakadaka Smashers. Uh, just because they're fairly simple, fighty, probably rubbish, but. Uh, um, they're fairly simple to play, I think. Um, just beat face, um, and if there's anybody left at the end, try and score. Um, so I'd like to do that. Um, the Mantic, the Autumn Mantic Open Day, or is it winter? I don't know which. Anyway, the second Mantic Open Day uh, is in November. I'm booked off work for that. That would be great. Um, I know that the Altrincham Club. Play, uh, sorry, put on uh, other events. So I think there's a, a Dreadball event in September. There's the Alti Bash, Kings of War. I'm looking to build up my uh, our Kings of War army. I've probably got enough for a, a sizable undead army already with absolute masses of zombies. I've got about 120 zombies. Um, so Kings of War is definitely in the future. 
Dungeon Saga stuff that I've got up already, plus the uh, Star Saga unboxing that I did. Um, that is also in the future, so there's a lot of uh, Mantic related content to come. Um, may well be some AOS on the channel as well. Uh, I'll see about that. Um, I certainly will be playing AOS with Aid, but whether or not I do some content. I don't, I, don't, I don't know, I'm undecided at the moment. Another interesting game that uh, I've become aware of, uh, certainly through the Stoke to Stafford Wargamers, uh, with Steve Perry, I believe, is, he's aka Pezapoo, uh, and Andy from Throatsword is a game called Wasteman. Wasteman, I think it's called Wasteman. Um, which looks really interesting, looks really fun. Uh, I know the uh, creator of that uh, posts up fairly regularly on um, Facebook and uh, I did compliment uh, some of the figures and the look of the game uh, the other day and he, he got back to me. Um, it looks like post-apocalyptic uh, wasteland game uh, where everybody's been hit by a healthy dose of radiation poisoning, which is nice. No idea how the game plays, but it looks good fun, uh, skirmish level, uh, looks sort of similar size to Dead Zone, or figure, sort of figure count to Dead Zone, or Malifaux, something like that, maybe a dozen figures. That's what it looks like anyway, I haven't really dug too uh, much further into it, but uh, I've had an invite to go down to the Stoke to Stafford. Gamers, um, and uh, take a look at that. So I shall certainly take them up on that offer. Um, sorry, I'm rambling a little bit, but uh, it's a bit of a stream of consciousness video uh, to keep me occupied on this short drive. So uh, just as a bit of an update. 46 minutes out, ETA 46 minutes, which is 8, 43 hours. You seem to be hitting um, one of those annoying average speed check areas of 50 miles an hour where everybody starts to put the foot on the brake. So, um, Games of Dead Zone today, really looking forward to it. The sun is beating down. It takes place at Element Games, which is a bit of a mecca for wargamers in the uh, northwest region of the United Kingdom. I've played events there before, I played uh, a Malifaux event there, I've played Lord of the Rings strategy battle game there, I've played uh, War Machine event. Machine events there. Um, I suppose most interestingly, there is um, a sizable war game shop. They've got a great online store. Um, it's one of my two go to online stores. The other being Firestorm Games in Cardiff. Um, I do have my wallet with me, which is always dangerous. I know that I pick up some heavy supplies I do need. Uh, kind of black spray. Uh, which uh, I ran out of the other day while I was spraying up some scenery. Probably a couple of other bits of paint, maybe a brush or two. If there's anything interesting uh, scenery wise. If there is any dead zone scenery at all, I'm not sure if they stop much Mantic at Element. Um, but if there is any of the dead zone scenery boxes there, I'm be tempted to purchase one of those, particularly uh, the industrial set, which has the pipes. Got, I don't know if it's the same set as the one with pipes in, but uh, it's like a conveyor belt. And, um, there's 
certainly set that's got some industrial fans in one of the three inch uh, tiles. Uh, that looks good, need one of those. Um, and I also don't have any of the uh, sort of armoured co military compound type tiles. Uh, so I'd like one of those as well. Um, so yeah, if there's any anything at all related to that, I'll pick it up. Uh, if there's any Walking Dead, uh, there's a couple of bits of season from, sorry, Wave 1 that are missing. Uh, probably to Woodbury. I'm missing, I'm missing Rick on a horse. And that's probably it for Wave 1. goes on to the green farm, green family farm uh, for wave two. Um, I see what there is, there might not be anything there. Uh, I might try and restrain myself. Probably not going to happen, if I'm honest. Is there any orc or goblin kings of war stuff? Uh, heartache, or even dwarves, or even undead. Um, painted my first unit of, I think, with an iron guard, the basic hand weapon shield, dwarf troops. Uh, got a regiment of those. Still not quite decided on how to um, base up my kings of war. I do like the um, sort of one base for a troop type uh, with uh, figures on a, a mini diorama if you like, but I can't guarantee that Kings of War will be the only fantasy game I play. I know there are other systems that the Stoke Club play and I don't want to exclude myself from the opportunity of playing some of those. Um, my Undead Army was certainly bought, painted, and played with um, using early, earlier editions of one I fancy battle, which is still quite big in the club, and particularly in the sixth edition, has seen some of the resurgence. Um, so I don't want to exclude myself from that, but I really need one army uh, to partake in that, and I've got dwarves and orcs as well, so I could go down the route of uh, keeping the undead on uh, the square basing, on the individual basing rather, um, and then do the dwarves and the orcs on the multi bases. That might be a way to go. Um, I'm also undecided whether to permanently, if I do go down the multi-base route, whether to permanently commit troops to uh, a certain unit size, so whether it be the troop, the regiment, board or legion, uh, whether to put them on one big base, or in fact um, base everything uh, as, a tr as, uh, as a troop, which for the 20mm by 20mm based figures of the dwarfs, in this case for me, um, just do multiple bases of troops, um, because a regiment is two troops, a horde is four troops, and a legion, I think six troops, yeah, I think that's right, six troops. So, rather than commit myself to particular unit size that might be the way to go. I don't know if that's what other Kings of War players do. I certainly know um, the majority of multi-based armies I've seen people are committed to at least a regiment size and then if they want a horde they'll put two regiments together rather than having a horde on the, I think it's centimetres by I don't know. Um, a 
So yeah, I'm not, not entirely sure on that yet. Um, I quite like the idea of the flexibility of being able to deploy either a troop regiment board as opposed to committing the troop the figures down to the, one particular size. So we'll see how that goes, but uh, yeah, Kings of War will definitely be on the horizon. Um, Hellboy uh, goes to late pledge Kickstarter, I think, in a couple of weeks time. It's 1st of July today, I've forgotten that actually. Um, It's a bit of a uh, amateur historian of the First World War. I've forgotten uh, that it was actually the 1st of July, which is uh, the first day of the Battle of the Somme, so it's the 102nd anniversary of uh, the first day of the Battle of the Somme. So please have a little thought about that. Um, clearly, this video will go way after the 1st of July, but um, we should always remember those sacrifices. Anyway, um, yeah, so uh, it's middle of July, I think the late pledge Kickstarter opens for Hellboy, which I really like the look of. I don't know much about Hellboy, to be honest, um, other than there being a couple of films, and I know there is a comic line, but um, I've not read comics since I was a teenager, so I'm way behind on that. Uh, as I said, just started to read dead, uh, which I've enjoyed, I'd say, um, so I may try and pick up some of the uh, Hellboy. It does go to retail, uh, well it's certainly, sorry, it's scheduled to arrive to Kickstarter's February, so I imagine retail will come some point after that salute, next year uh, the largest one day UK war game show. The Excel in London, I think it's the 2nd of April. I've suddenly posted a link up to it. Um, I've just seen. Uh, but I imagine Mantic would love that to be available as retail. Uh, and salute, I imagine it would go down an absolute storm. Um, so I'm, I may wait. I may wait. I have done a couple of the Mantic Kickstarters. Um, but both sat unloved to be honest um, in the garage uh, pledged for them it arrived I don't know, uh, that was uh, Dreadball Extreme and Mars Attack so both sat unloved sometimes to be honest yeah so uh, I, I pledged uh, the product arrived 9 to 12 months later whatever it was and then um, just just trying to do nothing until very recently so I've, I've, I've painted up the Mars Attack so that's another game actually uh, I'll probably be putting up onto the channel at some point um, I've been painted up a load of Martians and all the survivors from that game but uh, for me um, this is no criticism of the Kickstarter model whatsoever but sort of inner magpie syndrome kicks in with me and it's a greed thing I suppose but you see all of this beautiful stuff that's on offer particularly with the stretch goals that make Kickstarter so attractive particularly the Mantic Kickstarters because you will end up picking up um, the first couple of years releases of a game uh, for roughly 50% of what you'll be paying retail It is great to have that huge box arrive with all the plastic bits in it. Um, but for me, uh, it, it's, it looks all looks a bit overwhelming when it arrives. Certainly with both of the Kickstarter side, a, a huge amount of stuff, fantastic, but just overwhelmed by the quantity and then put on a shelf and forgotten about until years later. So probably at least four years with the uh, Mars Attacks Kickstarter before it hit the table. So 
uh, I think for me, um, my unless it's something that really, really grabs me, like for instance, if I've been on this Mantic kit, kick when Vanguard was um, up and running, the Vanguard Kickstarter, I most likely would have jumped on that. Um, but I think otherwise, uh, for me, it'll be waiting for the product to hit retail and then getting it through the friendly local gaming store or direct from Mantic or from a war game show, which then does my bet, I suppose, to help the retailers. And what I know is the Mantic marketing long term strategy model uh, of supporting uh, the retail uh, as opposed to purely being uh, all about the Kickstarter. I know that um, Kickstarter is going to be an emotive subject for a lot of gamers, uh, particularly for those who pledge and then um, don't see the product. Years, if ever, there's been a couple of real horror stories like the Prodos uh, Alien vs Predator Kickstarter, um, and a couple of others I just can't think of at the moment. But uh, it is a risk. Um, it's not just a pre-order system. It's uh, it's a way of uh, funding a company, uh, particularly new companies, to get up and running and launch a new product to market um, and particularly I think the case is where people aren't business people but have a great idea and use Kickstarter to try and it, it, back in the day uh, business owners would have gone to a bank uh, with a business plan um, and tried to persuade the bank manager to loan them X number of thousand pounds Kickstarter sort of has replaced the bank manager, I guess. Um, but then I think the temptation is to go too big too quickly, offering up a huge amount of product that the, this fledgling company, which more often than not is a one-man or two-man band or person band, um, and then they're unable to deliver on it. I'm not a businessman, I've, I don't really understand the business world, but that's from an outsider looking in, that would seem to be the case, and from having followed these things online, that would appear to be the case. So, uh, yeah, people, people are a bit marmite on Kickstarter, some people love it, some people hate it. Um, I'm probably in the middle, um, I really, I, I do really like Romantic model of launching um, either new rules or new versions of rules or new games or these um, licensed IPs through Kickstarter and then having the support further down the line uh, for the retail. Um, it's, it's, it certainly seems to have worked for Mantic. They've seen, I think. Um, up on 10 years in business, is it 9 or 10 years now, uh, from those first videos that Ronnie put up with the elf spearman, um, which uh, I do still have somewhat actually, from uh, when they first came out. Um, yeah, I think that's a big truck, I suppose. Stantons of Stoke, never heard of it. Making your journey easier. It's travelling at considerably more than 50 miles an hour on this uh, average speed check zone. I do wonder if every, anybody has ever been summoned over speeding in an average speed check zone. I've never heard of anyone, but it must have happened, I'm sure. Uh, right, okay, anyway, I'm going to stop that now. Um, I will try and catch some video at uh, the event, um, get some of the tables, 
uh, maybe try and speak to one or two people. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, I am still learning this art and craft of video making and creating content. Um, but bear with me, uh, I do promise to get better. I can promise to try to get better, that might be a better way. But, um, but uh, yeah, catch you in a bit. Cheers. And I am outside Element Games. It's very sunny. Let's see what comes. I can see lots of cars arriving. There are a lot of people carrying boxes of terrain and other goodness entering the mecca that is Element Games. So, there it is, folks. That's the entrance, and there's a little panoramic shot of what Element Games is a big old warehouse uh, in Stockport. So, let's go inside and have a look. <laughs> 